Yeah, welcome to an unex unexciting adventure <laughs> of uh, just a quick going over of Flash CS3 or simply just Flash in general. I'll try to not be too boring. Um, I'll try to go over some of the quick key features of Flash um, just to get things out the door, like just button shortcuts, and then I'll try to go into other things later on. But here is my go. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to show you one of my, um, just a section of one of my animations. Nothing too big, very simple, um, what I just recently completed. Um, basically, a destiny moment. Okay, so, you know, this is the completed seg. Just a little lock-off shot. Nothing too insane. But, um, and this is just a rough sketch I did, just to, you know, for, just for mat matting purpose. Okay, so um, what I'm going over is just some of the button options of Flash. Uh, right on the left-hand side, we have the tools. The tools orchestrate all of the things that you'll be using to create your masterpieces, so to speak. Um, you, most of the tools are pretty much self-explanatory. I'll go over the tools that I use. But before we jump too far into that, I'm just going to go to my little quick thing that I have here called Flash 101. Um, as you, when you open up Flash for the first time, you'll be presented with one of these options of things. You choose whichever one you prefer. I, when I'm doing just straight animation, I use ActionScript 2.0. If I'm doing anything like a game, I'll use ActionScript 3.0, depending. Because 2.0 and 3.0, they do have, uh, you, yeah, ActionScript 2.0 and 3.0 are slightly different. And they utilize different parameters. But again, I'm not going to get into that right now because that's another advanced thing. So straight into what we need to do in terms of, you know, you open up your flash, you get presented with something of this sort, and you're like, okay, what am I going to do? Decide, um, basically, you want to get familiar with the tools before you start doing anything. So right off the back, you have um, button shortcuts for me. Right away, I love to draw. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll make something else afterwards. So for me, my primary tool is the brush tool or the pen tool, but I use the brush more than often. So from to the brush tool is actually the letter B. B will get you into the brush tool, allows you to, if you have a pen tool, a pen, a drawing tablet, or pen like myself, you're able to get right off the back and do what you like. If you just have a mouse, then unfortunately you're locked to just one particular aspect. Um, so I use the, the brush tool. If I'm using the pen, I'll be using Y. So Y represents, you know, you know, the, uh, sorry, the pencil. And it allows me to, you know, draw using the pencil, whichever. And I just, you know, just use it like that. If I'm using a brush, the brush is a little bit different for me also. It gives me that, uh, it feels a little bit more natural to me, I believe, for the brush. Yeah, I might be a little short off here, but just just getting you an idea of how I use the brush versus the pen. Let me go back in. It's over here. All right. So we have the brush tool. Um, R represents a rectangle. So you have the rectangular options right here. So you can do that. Of course, O is for circle. N is for line tool. I used to use this a lot when I used to do a lot of graphic design and just did a lot of the cool techie websites. Um, to fill, sorry, I just did a fill with what I explained to you. Fill is the letter K. It allows you to do fill. Um, once you do that, um, very, if you're looking at the bottom, you notice that a lot of different options come up depending on what tool I select. That's the properties. The properties give you so many sub-menus and options to do so many different things with that particular tool. Again, I won't get into that. You can explore that later because that's going to take way too long. On the right-hand side, or however you want to place your, your layout, I have my color um, manipulator. I have my swatches, my library, and my actions. Actions is if you're a programmer, you want to actually program something, like in for the gaming or just, you know, for an interactive website, you can do that all there. Um, you have two different ways of writing. You can either hard code it or you can use descriptive sys. I haven't used that in many, many years. So go back to that. 
Um, at the bottom you have on my side, on my options, I have align, info, transform, output, and compiler. Output normally uh, reflects to when you're outputting the source. And if you're doing, if you're also programming a game, if there's an error, it will actually output it there. Transform, of course, is basically if you're doing something of the sort. Sorry, I did. Um, if you're in transform, you see you have a different many options to do that. Uh, info just tells you everything about where that object you're selecting is. Align, of course, you know, if you, gives you the option to align a set object anywhere. Okay, um, I is the ink tool, so it allows you to pick up, you know, like just a same dropper. Um, if you have um, a bitmap image, I believe I have one here. Let me see. Hopefully I do so I don't have to jump around too far. Space map. Say, for example, you have a bitmap image and you wanted to utilize that for something else so i'm going to go to my last frame here and bring this in make it small uh you have the option sub many options at the very top here to break it apart um so you go to modify you can break it apart and make it into um there you go so you can pretty much make it into a sub thingy whatever you want to call it um, you also have the option to convert to uh, to actually trace bitmap which will then also make it a vectorized picture and that allows for so many different possibilities um, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a underused tool um, it, it has so much potential it gives so many different options um, again I won't get too far into that um, we have so many little things here. I'm trying to go to the things that really are fun and awesome to use. I can start here. So say for example you made a circle and you wanted to do something like um you wanted to make a gradient but not really a gradient. So you go to you select the set object, you go to where it says um shape. You can do expand fill or soften fill edges. If you do this, watch and what happens. It softens it for you. This is a trick I've used many times over on several different things that I've done. And it's really cool. Um, you also have expand fill edges. And sometimes use it, not really that much. Um, you have also convert lines to fill. Hey, convert lines to fill. Yeah, well, convert lines to fill is if you have something like this, like, you know, a line, but you want it to be a fill. So you select it, you go there. Um, where is that thing? Convert lines to fill. It will actually convert the lines to become a fill. So pretty much converting the line to be like this. So once you have, once a fill, it's easily manipulated. Um, timeline. Uh, I don't really mess around with these stuff. Oh, yes. Another thing is grouping. I, know, I normally group when I'm doing things. Like say for example, I am making a face. Let's go. Let's just do a quick face. You can do a template. Okay. So say for example, we have this. I normally group it. Reason being, because when I'm actually going into build up, building the character to segment it, I normally like to build things in groups like nose and eyes i normally will group so it doesn't interrupt with what i'm actually working on per se okay i'll make the mouth into its own group so you have see yay all that cool stuff um so that pretty much breaks down the grouping aspect which is g oh it's g oh sorry control g um what else is there Okay, animating. If you're animating now, this is the next big thing for animating. You want to understand how to actually get around the frames. Um, na naturally, you know, you. I'll bring it up. I normally don't use it. Um, it should be controller. You can add this wherever you want it to be. I normally don't use it because I know the shortcuts. 
um, you have the le less than and greater than sign, not the arrow keys, to actually go back and forth and frame. If you want to play it down, you press enter. But less than and greater than sign is what you would use to navigate back and forth. If you're adding a keyframe, oh, I'm sorry, if you're adding frames, not a keyframe, because there's a difference between frames and keyframes. If you're adding a frame to extend it, it's F5. To, on, to bring it back, shift F5. Uh, to add a blank, to add a keyframes F6, to add a blank keyframes F7, to convert a particular symbol or object into um, a movie clip or graphic, it's F8. F8 allows you to choose either movie, button, or graphic. Please note, depending on how you do it, it gives you a lot of different options. A graphic does not have a lot of features as what a movie clip can do. A mo and vice versa. Um, a graphic can be previewed um, prior to render time. A movie clip will only be able to be uh, rendered out in render, in render time, which I'll explain. Um, so, for example, I'm going to do two of these little buddies here. Reason being, because I'm going to make a movie clip. Yay! Alright, so right away I will convert this bad boy into a graphic. Great over there and then I convert the other one into a movie clip yay right there all right so just to make my memory don't fail me movie clip graphic simple easy peasy okay right off the back as soon as you're selecting your movie clip or graphic key note the bottom section which is the properties it's very important that you watch that because basically you, can, you will know right away what you're doing in the later versions of Flash, such as CS6 and so forth, they do have a lot more options. Way more cooler options. Which I won't get into because we're using CS3. Um, on a movie clip, you can give it a name. Uh, i give it to uh, Ted. My Bill and Ted. Um, you can also change it. You know, Even though you created a movie clip, you can also change it at the bottom to be a graphic or a button. But remember, it still retains its uh, identity as a movie clip. Also, when you name, when you convert, when you do it, you want to make sure you name it. If you note on the right hand side over here with the symbols, um, you know they have see they're slightly different. The one with a circle, square, and a triangle that is a graphic. That's the quickest way to know what the difference is if you're looking in your library. And then right here, this is this this would be a movie clip. Um, earlier, I created just a quick little test, uh, which is basically. Um, a graphic and a, and a movie clip and I was showing um, just uh, the filters options which I don't know if I have time to get into but I'll quickly do it if I have time if you and if you want to look at it you can it's you know, it's a video you can rewind or whatever um, but going into let's say let's go into the movie clip we just want to add I'm going to Take this out here and put it up at the top and then make this be long frame. Okay, so say for example I just wanted, I would go F7. I lock the frame. F7 again. F5, 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 but make sure I put in the mount. F7. F5, F7. F5. Okay, so. It happens very fast, but, you know, just to give you an idea of that. So, I'm going to copy this right here, but I'm not going to put it anywhere as yet. So, what's this? I don't need this anymore, so I can remove. Okay, so, I'm just going to render it out. There we go, we have a little... 
stupid little eye things twitching right there. All right, very important things to note. You will not see render time or play down on the main timeline for a movie clip. If though, if I had converted this movie clip into a graphic, I will now get the option to do that, but I have to make sure to turn this section off into play once or loop. One thing to note is a movie clip is independent of a timeline. That means if it's looping in a, if you're using flash, if you if you converted the movie into a video, it's slightly different. But if it's flash where it's online and it's independently uh, linked, I'll get, I'll get rid of this one. I don't know. So I have this, okay. and I'll leave this as a movie clip, and I'll show the two different linking parameters. The animation will loop in, uh, indefinitely if it's a movie clip. For Flash, if it's a graphic, it is it's tied to the timeline. Why I'm saying that is if you look here, this the marginal ratio for this is 14 frames. This is 20 frames. Okay, and I think I'm going way over the time that I estimated. 16 minutes already okay so that pretty much wraps up for me you know what i'm trying to dictate in terms of the usage of the application oh other thing these little top things right here i, I only use these three in the middle uh regular onion skin i'll go into regular onion skin uh this middle one i don't touch um the last one here is very important to me because if i i am doing something Whoa. No, I don't want to do that. Um, I normally want to make sure I select everything. I'll put it over there. See, look at that. It's not so awesome. Yeah, it is. I know it is. All right. And um, oh, uh, if you are a frame, uh, if you want if you want to manage your document per se, right here at the very bottom we have the settings. I should have mentioned that earlier, but uh, I'm not skip all those things. Um, it gives you the different many things that you can do. You can, if you're, if you're publishing, you have different publishing options. If you're somebody who makes GIFs, um, these are the options on the side here for GIFs, image, PNG, so forth, projector, blah, 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 blah. Uh, flash, you want to make sure you pay strict attention to here, this side, for the sound of your output. You want to jack it up a little bit because if it's on, left on 16 and, you know, converts stereo to mono, going to mess your crap up a lot so you want to take that crap off um in this day and age where tech is so high now i don't see any reason for anyone to make their things way too small um you know and the internet connection is ridiculously fast these days you can make it low if you want it's it's your option your choice i jack things up my thing and you also want to jack that up high quality that means if you have any pictures you want your jpeg quality to be 100 percent i'm not into minimizing um, minimalizing my thing quality is very important to me um you can also pay attention to the sound from here if you go to um going back to the other one if you go into your properties of your your sound you can also see how crappy or good it might be so the sound quality that you bring into is very important so if, whatever if you're recording you want to make sure you have a good sound quality that you're recording um, export settings, MP3, drag it up to 48, fast, medium, blah, 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 all there, all from right clicking. If you're using a Mac, that's slightly different, I don't use Mac, you know, nothing against them, I just, kind of costly. Um, let's see, anything, oh yeah, um, my aspect ratio is 720 by 402. Um, I set as a default 24 frames a second pixel as my you know, preference for ruler measurements. Most of my time when I'm doing my things too, I normally try to make sure I have a grid ratio, which is control apostrophe. Is it apostrophe? No, that's not apostrophe. Ratio. Um, but I normally try to bring in my rulers. I get these out of here. I go view, rulers, and I try to make sure I lock it off. 
That's one of my key things that I try to do. I try to lock off my framing. I hope to try to make a better video to, you know, dictate things for you so you know, it's not so meh. But that's what I normally do. And if you want to lock these so these don't move around, you can go into the view, guide, grids. Where's that thing? No, remember? Uh, yeah. Lock guides. So now you can't move them once you lock them into play. As you can see, I don't normally go into that crap anytime. Um, you can flip your color scheming around for the pen tool, which I should have mentioned earlier. You can also change how thick the lines will be. All of this is from here. Everything is from here. Um, secondary option for the pen is if you want it to be very squiggly or sketchy, you can do that from this option here. Make it smoother or more jaggedy. And I'm going to go for the middle. It's just smooth. And that about rounds up my, you know, quick little thing over Flash. If there's anything that you, you, know, you wanted to notice, bust me. Like, ask me. You know, I'm pretty keen with Flash. I know it a little bit pretty well. So, that's about it. Peace. Have a good day.